Right, everybody. Hi, welcome to the uh, 10th uh, community meeting for the, uh, the data science uh, uh, and um, AI uh, group. Thank you very much all for coming. My name is Patrick. I am your host for today. And today we have a 90 minute session. I will be reminding people about times as we go through. Uh, just to make sure we stick to the uh, stick to the thing. But today's agenda, uh, I will pass over to Mohammed, uh, the creator of, the, of this of this uh, group, uh, and he will give you a weekly update about what's been going on in the community and all the new features and things that have happened in the last week. Then we are very delighted to have our guest speaker, Martin Petkoff, who's going to talk about JetGPT and other generative AI applications in marketing. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, hearing about that. Then after that, we're going to have a, like a 30 minute all hands uh, discussion to talk about the, the presentation and everybody contribute about what's going on in the world of AI and generative AI and data science in the last uh, week. Uh, then we'll hand over back to Mohammed to talk about the competition winners for, uh, that he runs for the competitions and the plans for next week. So uh, uh, for the community and what's going up. And then right at the end, I'll wrap up um, just to uh, you know, finish everything as any last minute bits of business. Um, so uh, thank you very much for, what, for visiting, coming to the meeting today. We're really happy to have you here. And I'll pass over to Mohammed to begin. Hey, thank you, Patrick. So welcome, everyone. Uh, so it's very proud to tell everyone that today is our 10th meetup. And uh, we are constantly doing this since the last 10 weeks. And it is a very great achievement. And now we are having this regular meetings. We have been trying a lot of times. And uh, this 4 p.m. Uh, suits well uh, because we have guests from the US and South America as well, Australia as well, and the Asian region as well. So now, uh, Thanks, uh, Patrick, for setting this up, for setting the structure of this. And uh, we were having a little bit open discussions in previous meetups. I request everyone to be who are not speaking to be on mute uh, so that it is. Yes. Cool. So now uh, regarding this uh, uh, community, so what we have been doing is uh, we have uh, doing a lot of discussions, a lot of active discussions have been happening in the community. Uh, we had people discussing about ethic, ethical considerations about AI, AI in education, what is the future of AI. Uh, people were talking about the potential risks of AI as well. And uh, there was a lot of discussion also regarding Elon Musk's launch of the uh, his entry into the AI domain as such. And uh, the, about AI, about people were also asking uh, about LLMs. What are the focus of LLMs? How we can uh, build LLMs? How and what are the best LLMs out there? So these were these uh, lot of discussions. This this week, a lot of active discussions were happening in the group. I think Zach he's not yet joined, but the, he was one of the initiators of many of these discussions and also uh, AI in healthcare. So what we, I have been also doing as a uh, you can say service or as a offering is trying to summarize the text that is going on because uh, when I uh, see that a lot of discussions are happening but some of us are missing out they cannot read through all the 300 messages that are happening so what we have done is like we have used we are using some AI tools to summarize the uh, WhatsApp conversation and try to uh, put it uh, in a uh, bullet form or and give it give it uh, to you guys and right now we are putting it on the website so i'm going to sh i've shared the yesterday's on the previous you can see the whatsapp message and i'm going to put make a repository I I, mean, I, someone I is telling, can you just uh, can i just uh, tv who's anyone speaking yeah guys who are just can you be on mute please uh, let me yeah cool so now uh, regarding this uh, what we are going to do is we are going to make a repository and also we are going to create a weekly summary. So daily summary will be there and a weekly summary so that uh, people can know what all has happened in the week. So this is one of the new things that we are testing and we always have a caveat, right? This is AI generated using these many messages and some of the summary may be inaccurate, but we are getting the idea of what is happening. This is 
uh, one stuff right and uh, we are also having a workshop which i'm going to talk also in details so outcome based workshop next week we are planning the first uh, workshop that we are planning as a community it is going to be 2 hours and it is going to be very much intense wherein you are going to use the ai tools and try to build something and have a something out uh, as a pro uh, outcome after the end of the 2 hours right it will be completely uh, focused based uh, because these meetups are very good for us to have awareness sessions webinars are there and also we are going to have a uh, we are going in, after the end of this uh, after when i get to get the next week's plan and the competition winner at the end after martin's presentation i am going to talk about the we what structured uh, weekly programs that we are going to have uh, and uh, i am going to have it on the events page wherein you guys can register and know like if, like today i had one data career thursday evening i had a business uh, generative ai for business webinars uh, so these are the webinars i keep doing on a weekly basis on linkedin and you guys as a community member can join in and uh, learn from it and also share your thoughts and uh, so now these are the things that are a lot of things are happening uh, you and one more thing the I just wanted to add here uh, uh, some people don't know that you can mute the whatsapp many people are saying that whatsapp like people are here from singapore they say that in the late evenings they get disturbed uh, so you can always have an option to mute the uh, whatsapp group I, i know that there are a lot of messages and this is a global group i cannot have a rule uh, that uh, we can only message between 8 am to 10 am because this is a global group we have people from australia all the over to uh, us and we then this is a global group and i don't think a restriction may be that helpful so i request everyone who gets disturbed by notifications uh, there is an option to mute the notifications and whenever you are uh, wanting to uh, know you can come to the group and all the events that are there are already marked so there is a nas io platform which i'll also be showing at the end of the uh, session when i share my screen you can go and see all the events all the basic courses and content out there so now not taking much time for this uh, i would like to introduce our uh, distinguished speaker mr martin he is a marketing leader and a metaverse advocate he is renowned for driving high impact strategies and fostering high performance teams right and he is the head of marketing at land vault and qdo he has demonstrated exemplary leadership managing marketing execution developing innovative strategies and integrating automation and uh, he is here with us he is going to talk more about himself and uh, over to you uh, martin thanks a lot for joining first of all personally i really want to uh, thank you and i am going to make you the host so that you can share your screen over to you martin thank you thank you pleasure thanks so much for inviting me and for having me first of all Uh, I appreciate the introduction as well. Can I just ask if everyone is seeing my screen? Yes, yeah. we can see, Martin. We can see. Thank yes, you. Yes, we can see. We can see. Perfect. Okay. So, our agenda for today is first, I'm going to cover generative AI marketing superpowers and where they're arising from. Next, I'm going to talk about the five P's of ChatGPT's marketing use cases. Then we're going to dive into a practical exercise, which I think is going to be one of the most interesting parts for our visitors today. Then we're going to discuss how any organization can scale marketing AI in ten strategic steps. And then, just finally, I'm going to present some additional reading for people who want to dive into the topic in more depth, and then wrap up with some useful resources that I've been using. So let's dive in then. To begin with, AI uh, has language processing, computer vision, and predictive analytics capabilities, which are set to radically revolutionize the way that we do marketing. For example, AI's language-related applications, such as natural language processing and generation, can automate customer service, generate personalized marketing communications, and understand customer sentiments very often in real time. And these can drive a more intuitive shopping experience, tailored campaigns, and real-time adjustments that each brand can make. AI in Vision offers opportunities for personalization and creative marketing, 
It can analyze images and videos, identify emotions, and even allow facial recognition for applications such as payments. This technology enhances customer engagement and offers unique ways to connect with your audience. However, the misuse of AI, like in deepfakes, could threaten brand image and integrity, so it's important to be mindful of these considerations and be proactive in terms of managing the risks. Finally, AI-powered predictions and decision-making enable more tailored and efficient marketing approaches. By predicting outcomes, identifying patterns, personalizing experiences, and making recommendations, AI can drastically reduce the risk of ineffective campaigns and enhance customer satisfaction. Now that we understand this basic introduction, let's get a little bit more specific and explore the five P's of ChatGPT's marketing use case. And the reality is that AI has implications across the, scope, the, the whole spectrum. In planning, it allows marketers to analyze past data sets, identify opportunities, develop targeted strategies, score leads, understand consumer behavior, and foster strategic partnerships. When it comes to the actual production, AI also helps in creating data-driven content, predicting content performance based on past data before deploying it, personalizing content, and designing interactive online spaces. With regards to personalization, it assists in enhancing user interactions through AI-powered chatbots and provides real-time tailored content and personalized emails. When we talk about promotion, AI helps in audience targeting, predicting successful creatives, delivering individual content experiences, adjusting the digital ad spend in real time with some more specific applications, and identifying social media trends as they emerge. And finally, performance-wise, AI helps measure return on investment, identifying top performing content, forecasting campaign results, predicting revenue potential based on lead scoring and customer scoring, and monitoring marketing trends more broadly. So to sum up, AI is a very, very transformative tool for marketing, which significantly enhances engagement, personalization, and performance. Now, here I'm going to pause and just open the floor for any questions on this initial introduction before we dive into the practical exercises and examples. I so, um, yeah, Chris, go ahead. You were asking. Yeah, Chris had a question. I just wanted. To... Yeah, yeah. So the question is, um, you mentioned uh, predictive and decision making. I thought uh, ChatGPT was just purely a language model. I know that you can take on the behaviours of certain professions and so on, but I just wanted you maybe to expand a little bit on that because my understanding would be that I would have to use a separate kind of data science uh, application, maybe something like TensorFlow or something, um, to be able to come up with the proper analytics to be able to make a decision based on um, data that you either provide. So I just wondered if you could expand a little bit on that marketing side, how you would see that it could make a decision um, because exclusively it's a, a language kind of model. Does that make sense? Totally. It's a brilliant question. And it's helpful just to start with a reminder that my talk is a little bit more broad, so I'm not specifically focusing on ChatGPT, but other generative AI and other AI tools, which are so extensive that I can't possibly mention them or list them all within a single session. So strictly in answer to your question, if we're just relying on ChatGPT, probably it's going to be a challenge. With the uh, enabled code interpreter, what I've seen is people feeding it data and then analyzing that data and doing a little bit of predictive analysis from that perspective. But just chat GPT by itself, even with the plugins and even with uh, the code interpreter, may struggle a little bit with that at this stage. But there are other solutions which I'm able to chat about offline. Yeah, perfect. I mean, that's my understanding. I just want to make sure that um... 
I had not missed missing anything. Yes. <laughs> That's right. You guys are the experts, right? I'm just following behind. True. Now, uh, of course, and then, so now we're diving into the practical bit of the exercise. And I have enabled three plugins here that I think are going to be helpful for our purpose. World News, which is allowing me to summarize and get insights from news headlines. I also have the link reader, which is going to be useful because I'm going to provide a link in the first prompt. And I have score AI in case ChatGPT decides that some of the useful information can come from academic research. And now I'm going to, in, in a sequence of different steps, using different prompts, showing you how I have personally found some useful ways of using ChatGPT for marketing. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to provide it with a prompt to review this website, which some of you may recognize, where a lot of uh, Mohammed's courses are hosted. And I'm going to ask uh, ChatGPT to review this website, describe its three to five primary buyer personas, and write one short paragraph for each. Now, considering that this is a live demo, obviously we're dependent on ChatGPT behaving. I'm sure all of you here are regular users and know that sometimes it has hiccups and it's uh, struggling. Okay, so despite some limitations, it's picking up sufficient information for the purpose of our exercise. And it identified four primary uh, buyer personas, which are aspiring data scientists, current data professionals, managers and executives, academics and researchers. Now, in the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flesh that buyer persona. And if any of you, and in particular, Brennan was most interested in SEO and content creation, if he's wondering why I'm starting from here, it's simply because first I want to develop the buyer personas, then understand them in a little bit more detail. And then based on that, I'm going to dive into SEO and content. So in the second prompt, I'm going to say, Act as a competent chief marketing officer. This is a very popular uh, little hack when prompting to give him to, to give charge of your role and list all relevant information, fields, questions, and sections you will include if you are designing a detailed bar for some. And I'm doing that so that I have an exhaustive list of what I'm after when designing bar persona, and we can see the detailed list already being generated. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is in the third prompt, I'm going to say, I'm going to give some context saying, this is our business. And I'm going to take this organization as an example as well. Again, this is our business. Now, based on your response above, Based on your response above, create detailed buyer persona covering all 10 outlined items above for the following profile. Now I'm just going to scroll a little bit higher. And because I want something a little bit more generic and universal, I'm going to pick up this persona, which is not as specialized, and we're going to get insights for a more generalist audience. Cool. And we can see that based on the provided information, we're beginning to discover far more granular and nuanced insights about what that particular buyer persona may look like. And while I'm waiting to generate, demographic information can help us with uh, targeting. Income level can help us in terms of tailoring our messaging. Psychographic information is helpful for the sales team and the marketing team. The professional information in particular job role, industry company size can help us when doing outreach to these individuals in LinkedIn. The behavioral information is going to be super helpful again for marketing, but also for the sales team when engaging with them. The customer journey information is going to help us 
formulate the broader marketing strategy based on the different stages, through awareness, all the way through retention. Pain points and challenges are going to be helpful in terms of devising our strategy for content. Goals and motivation, the same. Brand interactions is going to help us devise our outreach strategy in terms of favoring webinars and live sessions, preferring email communication for course details, etc. And then the preferences and then some quotes which uh, we can use again for messaging. Now, what I'm going to do is in the fourth step of this exercise, I'm going to use the following from asking uh, ChatGPT based on the detailed information for this buyer persona, create the following. And I'm going to be slightly more specific here saying task one, list of long tail keywords and key phrases, and task two, 10 blog posts based on these keywords and key phrases. Now here, specifically for uh, Brennan, we're seeing how we're diving into the, the specific, into the specifics of SEO research and then content creation. Oh, and most of you familiar with ChatGPT know that it tends to a little bit of explanation, a little bit of summary at the end, just giving us the context and explaining why it gave us the answer that it gave us. Now, personally, I always like tweaking things before I make them official. For example, if I'm building a PowerPoint presentation where I'm fleshing out these buyer personas, I'm going to review these particular long tail keywords. Maybe I'm going to tweak them make them more exclusive if there is a lot of overlap between them. I'm going to do the same, of course, with the blog post ideas. But for the purpose of today, let's just continue. In step five, I'm going to say write a detailed, write a detailed 1,500 word blog post outline, include a word count for each section, and I'm just going to give it a topic. And let's open it. Let's open it up to the audience. Can, you, can I please ask you to kindly pick one of these topics so that what we're producing is most interesting to you? Number one. Number one. Number one. You can see the output is exactly as requested. So we have each section with a couple of bullet points and with the corresponding word count. It's always helpful to double check to make sure that it has responded correct to our requirements. So we have 150, 350, 550, 950, 1,250, and 250 more exactly 1,500 words. Uh, please note that the word counts are approximate. That's fine. Anyone who is producing content knows that they're approximations. So in the next step, we already have, from the start of the conversation, enabled some plugins beyond the link reader. And these were, just as a reminder, the world news and the score plugins. And now I'm going to see if it will uh, use them to create an original blog post. And what I'm going to prompt for this particular case is uh, write 1,500 word blog post based on the outline below in triple quotes. So again, at the end of the session, I'd like to hear your opinions, but I read that the triple quote delineation is making it quite helpful for judge to distinguish requests from context. So I'm using that and I found it helpful. Uh, browse the web to include relevant references supporting each major point using the enabled plugins. And I'm just giving it some instructions here. Write in a professional, knowledgeable, informative, and critical writing style. Use simple and clear sentences with appropriate transition words and phrases. And I'm further instructing it to write in British English. And this, if you ask me, 
we cannot really know what's happening inside where it's reading these instructions and responding to them, but from my own experience, including them, tends to produce slightly better results when I run the output through something like AI content uh, identifier, for example. Cool. And now I'm just going to say here outline. And in the triple quotes, I'm just going to copy and paste the outline that it produced in the previous response. Four quotes at the end, and let's see. The moment of truth, will it use the plugins or not? Yep, it is using Score AI, so that's great. And with these plugins, what we're seeing is that often it will actually produce some real information, real references, whereas in the past, before it had the plugins, very often it would attempt to provide some references, but upon investigation, they would turn out to be fakes. Or probably some of you have come across the fact that previously ChatGPT would suggest that it caught the information from a specific URL. But when you try and find that URL, the syntax seems all correct and logical, but no such page exists. For example, it's picking something like Reuters and it's coming up with a headline which would support its point on some financial topic, but actually no such article was ever created. It's a great example of so-called hallucinations. Perfect. And we're seeing some solid output here, actually, which is very encouraging. Let's see, let's see where it will be able to use the reference list successfully, because sometimes it gets into a loop and it just keeps going and it doesn't stop. Fantastic. These are perfect results. So it came up with, with 14 references with the links to each of them, which is super helpful. And we have them here in the text as well. So we have a fairly robust uh, block post created. As any of you can already guess, this is far shorter than 1,500 words. So let's see what we got in the end. And uh, let me just see if I can find it. Oh, so this is what I'm using at the moment. It's content at scales uh, advanced AI detector. I've tried a couple of different ones, but I find that to be sufficiently capable for, for, for my particular needs. And it's coming up with a score of 74% human. And this, this is in the category likely both AI and human. And now the latest stance on Google is that it doesn't penalize automatically or AI generated content. It's still maintaining its criteria for, uh, expertise, authority, trustworthiness, and experience in its content, regardless of whether it was produced by humans or AI. So it's not necessarily a problem that some of the language that is used within the blog post sounds a little bit robotic. That, that won't be an issue in, in and of itself. If you wanted to go back and do a little bit of research, additional research and tweaking, you can, of course, do that. Also, what we're seeing here is that the response is about two and a half times shorter than what we requested. It's 624 words. And personally, what I would do at this stage is I would just take everything, together with the links, copy and paste it into a Word document. And then if I wanted to get a little bit more depth, I would just take this particular section and would say, please, Mm. Well, ChatGPT doesn't understand emotions so far, so it's not necessary to say please in uh, your prompt. I'm just going to say elaborate, elaborate on this section. Keeping, I don't know. I, I think we must always be polite to our robotic overlords, so we we should say please. <laughs> yeah. So here is my take on that, Patrick. I discovered that uh, intuitively. I resonate with what I just said. I'm treating it with respect. It's extremely helpful. So I'm treating it the way that I would treat a human being. The reason I stopped including please is because the more concise and the more clear the prompt, 
the better the response. In that case, please is not adding anything to the quality of the response, but it's an additional work which it has to filter and process. That's why I keep it quite professional. If if I like the, the, the response, I'll make it clear by, by saying this is a great response, but add or do this, that and the other. But I'm avoiding please because I don't think it's adding value. Collaborate on this section, keep it the same writing yeah, style. It makes sense, yeah. <laughs> Martin. Yeah. And Martin, the other thing is you can be even more specific on the elaborate. You can actually tell it, you know, how many sentences or what have you. <laughs> so <laughs> you can be more precise. Chris, I was just going to add that, yeah. Right, yeah. I want the response. And, and here, again, it's debatable. It's best to learn it through trial and error. For me, especially with the latest updates of ChatGPT, the word count tend to work quite well. Initially, they didn't. It, it was simply ignoring them. It was better to use number of paragraphs or sentences. But in that case, I'm finding that the word count tends to work very effectively. I wonder the response to be 200 words minimum. Just one, one thing um, I just wanted to clarify. So you're using four, right? In order to be using any plugins for the interpreter, it no, no, needs no. to be four. Absolutely, yes, sorry. That, I should have kicked ahead of that. The only problem that I found is um, you're going to run out of, um, I don't know what they call it, tokens or, you know, there's a limitation. So there's a constraint in terms of what you're, what you're doing. 20, 25 messages per three-hour window, yeah. yeah that is the case. case. I find that, you know, you do all this work and then it just, it'll bomb you back into 3.5 pretty quick and you'll lose, you, you, obviously it'll keep the history, but then you have to wait until it lets you back in again. So... Yeah, Chris, I, I, this is a brilliant question. Yeah, sorry, please go Yeah, on. I'm just going to say that I, I do a lot of work on this as well. They use 3.5 most of the time and a lot of it depends on your prompt. What you tell it in the prompt, if the quality of a result will... Uh, will will be dramatically different depending on how you're putting your prompts, as I'm sure you're aware. So I'm using 3.5 for almost everything, and, it, and it's, the content it's producing, I throw into WordPress, for example, and then I humanize it a little bit, and then I'm using plugins in WordPress to check for that it's SEO optimized, etc. because it, you need to add the keywords and all these other things as well. So, um, yeah. But I find 3.5 fine. Yeah, and the, the problem is obviously, um, Patrick, because if you use 3.5, you don't have the plugins. So then this use case that we're going through won't work. So, you know, that's... that's yeah, yes, in this example, yes, yes, for sure. Absolutely. That's why, that's what I'm... I, I get the chat GPT to produce the outline, it produce draft text, and then I manually edit it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's basically, basically based with my, my knowledge of what I'm trying to produce as well. No, 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 but I like what Martin's doing. I'm just, I'm just worried, Martin, you're going to get, you're going to get stopped pretty soon because you're doing some really <laughs> hard work there. <laughs> yeah. Chris, Chris, it's, it's a brilliant question. It's a brilliant question. And, yeah, no, it's very let interesting. Me point, yeah. I'm mindful of that and I'm using them uh, not interchangeably, but I'm strategically combining them. Let's put it that way. If I'm just summarizing text that I'm going to feed into ChatGPT for context, for example, oh, yeah. I will summarize, I will use 3.5 to summarize 2000 word articles into 500 words. And then I would use that as a, as a part of the context in the prompt. Sorry, sir, sorry, speak properly. I'm here to solve the problem. Guys, can you mute who's not speaking? I think uh, you have the power to mute, Martin. You're the host. You can just click on Avini and. Yeah. Perfect. Thank so you. I will say. I would use 3.5 to summarize something which I will use as context for in a prompt in ChatGPT4. But then if I want to be using the output, for example, for the book that I'm writing, if I'll be using the output, I always make sure that I generate it with ChatGPT4, simply because it's introducing more variety. It's more human-like when I run it through the tests. So for basic tasks that I wouldn't be using to publish somewhere, I'm using 3.5. And then I'm combining it with four using two different chats. Otherwise, I fully agree with you, Chris. It's it's a little bit of a pain in you know where. So it is what it is at this stage. Uh, one one final thing. I don't want to kind of hog the the conversation, but um, 
I noticed you didn't make any mention of any of the parameters in terms of using uh, for, so you're kind of using the inbuilt, in, inbuilt parameters as part of the chat. Whereas if you look at the playground, you have a lot more uh, ability to be able to turn up settings and so on. So I just wondered if that's something that you factored you factored in at all. Okay. It's a brilliant question, and uh, I uh, I am familiar with this. It's just that I'm not a heavy user. I I tend to use it for business, for marketing applications, but my background in data science is not as strong. So when I tried using some of these parameters within this version of ChatGPT, not the playground, I didn't see substantial difference in the responses that I got. And if you're asking me whether I'm using the playground, it's at this stage a little bit beyond my comprehension, beyond my needs. So I'm just using this chat and I'm tweaking the functionality based with uh, simple language. So if I wanted more variety instead of playing with uh, temperature or, or something else, I'm just going to explain that in, in language, in my prompt. Got it, got it. Now that makes sense. Um, I would uh, think you might it might be worthwhile for you to invest some time on the playground so that you could pick up those parameters and then use them as part of any processing because it's very useful. But um, yeah, I love I love your approach. It's uh, it, it's it works well for for four because you don't have the ability to to really set the parameters in here as opposed to the playground. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean it's it's. Sorry, I don't want to uh, stop your demo. It's, it's, please continue. It's really great. No worries at all, Chris. And I appreciate that perspective. And it's definitely something that, that uh, I will need to take a look at at some stage if I decided to be a bit more technical about my approach. Cool. So what we're seeing here is our purpose was purely with this additional prompt to get it to the required word count. Not only did we get it to, to 118 words, but the quality is now ranked as high, highly likely to be human. And we also have it to 218 words. And we can follow the exact same step for each of the other sections, including the references. And that way we can build a uh, whole article. And basically that is what I wanted to go in terms of a demo. So just to recap, we went through a couple of steps. We started with the basic website URL asking ChatGPT to identify primary buyer personas or ideal customer profiles. Then we used the act as prompt so that it, it assumes a role and asked it to list all the different metrics or different parameters of a detailed buyer persona. And then we use that in conjunction with the paragraph to build the detailed buyer persona of an executive. And now, based on the information that we got from here, we can do a lot of things in marketing, like tailor our strategy, tailor our content, inform the sales outreach efforts, but we chose to use it to generate a list of long-tail keywords and blog post ideas. And based on that, using some of the other enabled plugins, we went and developed an outline initially and then expanded it into a longer form post which we can further elaborate each section by taking it separately and using ChatGPT once again to elaborate on it. Finally, before publishing, it's always wise to run it here and see if there are any particularly robotic paragraphs like the ones highlighted in orange, maybe do a little bit of a tweak, or if you're a Grammarly uh, premium user, when you put that into a Word document, you may get some additional suggestions and based on that, maybe just fixing these is going to be enough so that it's not as robotic as it once was. So, okay. Any questions before we go back to the presentation? About what? Okay. And finally, scaling marketing AI in 10 steps. And again, many of you who are listening attentively and are using ChatGPT will notice that probably some of the things that I'm talking about transcend the current capabilities of ChatGPT. But I want to give you a broader perspective of how all the available tools, some of which which are built on top of ChatGPT, others which are built on other 
uh, language models and other AI technologies can be used collectively to make marketing smarter. So starting first, step one, think strategically. Use AI to solve business issues by reducing costs or increasing revenue. Understand its capabilities and experiment strategically. And I'd just like to emphasize that once again, just in terms of thinking about AI and how it can be used in marketing, think about these two basic categories, either reducing costs or increasing revenues. Now, when we're going to discuss some of the next steps, it's going to become apparent that typically the second use case, which is about reducing costs, is easier to put into practice as a pilot and easier to get buy-in from the leadership team. The other one is arguably more important. The other one is arguably more important in its raising revenues, but it requires a little bit more careful planning, a little bit of experimentation and trial and error. Step two, recognize the importance of data. Data is essential for AI success in marketing. Use AI to automate data organization and visualization and develop a robust data strategy for your organization. And then step three, be an informed buyer. Understand AI technology to identify solutions that drive efficiency and performance. I'd like to pause here for a second and show you something which uh, some of you may be familiar with. I'm having to go out of that screen simply because I have the Zoom display at the top and I can't open new tab without going through that intermediary step. Cool. So this aggregator, it's called, uh, there is an AI for that. It's a super powerful platform which features, which features uh, various AI solutions. Here it is. Oh, so let, let's say we just want to explore marketing applications of AI. You just type in marketing and lo and behold, you're beginning to see the different applications. You can go by task and then underneath each, we have some of these key use cases. You click on it, and then you can visit the website and you can understand a little bit more about how it's working. Super powerful aggregator of all AI tools that are coming. And very importantly, what I was showing you, what I was uh, showing you in my uh, Gmail is the newsletter that I'm receiving from them. So on a daily basis, they just collate all the different AI tools across different categories that have been released in the past day with the short description and with the link so that you can go and explore them. And in case there is anything which is of value to you, you can introduce it to your daily practice. Just to let you know, you got five minutes, yeah? Yep, absolutely sufficient. I'll speed it up. So we covered being informed by our number four, prioritize use cases. Focus on one use case at a time during early stages of AI adoption to better understand its potential. Go small, don't go all in. Go small, prove that there is value so that the leadership is on board and then you may be able to scale and add additional solutions. Number five, define key business goals and challenges. The primary outcomes of AI initiatives should always be about cost reduction or revenue generation. Focus on customer experiences, identify new markets and generate new opportunities. These are all possibilities that AI can also support. Number six, educate and engage leadership. Get buy-in from leaders by helping them understand the potential hurdles, but also the value learning through experimentation. Number seven, reimagine marketing team. Prepare for disruption, continuously upskill, and collaborate with AI-driven agencies or consulting firms if needed to nurture both internal and external talent. Number eight, train your team and explore AI together. Create comprehensive learning programs, to exploit AI's potential, like the ones that Mohammed is offering. Include professional development sessions, talks, courses, and certifications in the training strategy. Number nine, encourage joint learning between humans and machines. Promote mutual learning for better financial gains from AI. Facilitate continuous systematic learning and adopt a flexible approach to change. 
Very quick detour here. I don't know where you're discovering that, but in my experience at least, the more I use AI, the more I see that my thinking is a little bit more structured, a little bit more organized. So what we're observing here is that a human is learning from AI. I don't think there is anything to be ashamed about that. It was a model built on huge amounts of knowledge and information, so it surpasses most of us in terms of general knowledge. Personally, the, the way that I work with it, I'm discovering that I'm learning things which make me a better marketer, ultimately. And finally, number 10, use AI to humanize your brand. Use AI to automate repetitive tasks and concentrate on creativity, relationship building, and empathy. Consider the potential ethical and privacy concerns of AI technology and use it to free more time for uniquely human activities like thinking and communicating with other people. And now that we have wrapped up the 10 steps in terms of further reading, I recommend AI and the Future of Metaverse Marketing, which is one of my articles on LinkedIn, which you can just access through my profile. And then uh, for a far deeper dive into marketing uses, I'd say that's one of the best books on the subject, Marketing Artificial Intelligence, AI Marketing in the Future of Business by uh, P. Reutzer and M. Caput. And finally, in terms of additional resources, if you have any questions, just reach out to me on LinkedIn. More than happy to have a conversation and share my uh, experience and discuss topics. ChatGPT, of course, this is the tokenizer which helps you see how long is your prompt so that you know whether you're exceeding the limit and how much remaining tokens you're going to get for the response. Tally for image generation, Bing images, I find is one of the best free solutions out there. The AI content detector, which I just showed you, just to make sure that your content is uh, human level before you publish it externally. There is an AI for that, is the website aggregator that I showed you with different AI use cases. Of course, the guides for best practice use chat GPT, which are available on the OpenAI platform. And finally, if you want to take your learning further, learnprompting.org and Mohammed's learning courses as well. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening and for being such a great and engaged audience. Now I'd like to open the floor for questions. Thank you so much, Martin. That was brilliant. Yeah, please, anybody has questions about the presentation? Now's a chance. Uh, well, Martin, I can't find you on LinkedIn. <laughs> so I just wondered, is there, is there, there are many uh, pet cogs on uh, LinkedIn, but I can't seem to find you? No uh, worries at all. I'm just going to paste the link here. So we can... Great, thank you. Uh, and the other thing was, you know, we. I was I was waiting anxiously for that decision making <laughs> that you were going to um, provide us with. Are you kind of um, you mentioned um, not Chat GPT exclusively, but you did mention that there were some other tools that would help with the decision making side of things. Um, are you? Are you kind of just saying that you should use ChatGPT in terms of trying to influence a decision at the end of the day, but there isn't anything that, or are you kind of saying that you, you would use the plugins as a way of being able to arrive at a decision? Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, so it's a combination of these two things. And once again, is the main reminder is that I'm not talking about ChatGPT exclusively. At the moment, ChatGPT, even in the plus version, can hardly support predictive analytics and forward-looking decision-making. There are other tools available, which I'm happy to share with you once we connect on LinkedIn, because it's beyond the scope of this particular presentation. No, that's fine. Thank you. I've, I've got you now on, on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll let somebody else have questions, and if not, then I can come back. <laughs> <I've> got, <laughs> or maybe we'll collect afterwards. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm into this thing pretty much. 24 seven, man. So <laughs> I don't have the questions. <laughs> well, in that case, it would be great to have you as a presenter on one of the upcoming sessions, Chris, because I do feel that you probably have a lot of knowledge that is worth sharing. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I mean, I, I, I came across your aggregator, but there were a few more as well. So yeah, happy to uh, possibly uh, do something. Sure, Chris. That, that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be, uh, I mean, it's so interesting to see everybody's different perspectives are using the same tools. It's so valuable.
in in fact what i'm doing it uh, i'm actually because of the actually before plugins so i actually do coding outside in terms of the maths and then i just use uh chat gpt to to give me some language on the back of the mathematical calculations and if you try and get it to do the maths it gets it wrong without the plugins um and uh, and then what you can do is you can tell it well actually you're wrong here is the correct answer which you've already computed <laughs> and then you put it back in and then it 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 actually works well because now you've plugged the the flaw that it's got around its math so yeah i've been doing some interesting things but i'm using it to kind of uh do predictions in a in a scientific way um and now with the use of plugins it's it's even better so yeah i mean there's there's lots of lots of stuff i i can share with you guys so chris i have shared the registration link for speakers you can just uh, choose the dates uh, that you are comfortable in your topic and we have we are going to do it at the same time every week so we have a list of speakers but you can just uh, select whichever time you are free and then uh, i will just confirm with with you with the uh, team so you can yeah. uh, give your talk uh, in the coming uh, event and we all would love to get your perspective as well yeah yeah definitely i mean um, let, let's have a chat offline i'm i'm you know the time is critical for me i'm doing so many different things but uh definitely we'll try and uh, fit fit something in and I'll connect with you on linkedin as well i'll send you a message so it'd be good sure thank you uh questions guys anyone uh, very uh, martin yeah martin. please let's uh please uh, throw, throw your ideas don't be shy i i can ask more questions if nobody wants <laughs> So this session Patrick has told me to talk less so I'm going to talk less. <laughs> <laughs> well so also <laughs> now I mean this this next section is all about not just the presentation but yeah. what's going on in the, in the world of AI uh generative AI and data science now. Um I mean probably the biggest thing that happened this week was Elon Musk announcing his X AI yeah. Um and it'd be interesting maybe to what people feel about that. Any takers? Yeah I mean um are we talking about uh, maybe I'm a bit confused because there's so much going on Claude No this is uh, Elon Musk has, uh, has launched a new company called XAI uh, you can see it if you google it so it's going to compete with ChatGPT Yeah and yeah so but, uh and it's got a, a lot of Absolutely but it's not out for X Google X ChatGPT etc etc et all coming together No no he just announced the company no yeah exactly oh, okay. but there was a, there was a discussion on Twitter the other day and I got a summary of some of it I can mention some of the points he made if that helps um said he said the goal with XAI is to build a good AGI artificial general intelligence with the purpose of understanding the universe okay um for true seeking super intelligence humanity is much more interesting than not humanity So that's the safest way to create one. Musk gave the example of how space and Mars is super interesting, but it pales in comparison to how interesting humanity is. So he he's trying to he's trying to create an uh, a, a presumably a a general AI that is works in an ethical fashion. It's not trying to kill us. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll put I'll put the I'll put the these comments. I found that somebody who attended the meeting on Twitter. I'm I'm pinging him on the comments so everybody can have a look. But um he wants he he thinks ultimately this could help us solve your fundamental questions about existence etc. Uh uh so it's it's really taking it to a whole new ball game. So I'm just wondering, you know, we're obviously very early days with this. I mean ChatGPT only became really people became aware of it back in November. So um what do you think's happening at yeah what, what what do you think uh, what's what what's everybody's feedback about uh, this kind of these kind of tools are generally for society etc i i think it's too early i mean uh, it's not did he give a date of when it's coming out or anything at all it was there any timeline no it doesn't seem to i mean i didn't i'm looking for the notes of this guy i put it in the group somebody who attended on his twitter account but he doesn't seem to mention dates at the moment uh, yeah. i can't see any dates on there 
but that's what I've done, you know, Patrick, because there's so much going on. I've just kind of dismissed it until such time that there's something. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there is that point, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of, when Elon says something, you tend to, you know, I mean, he's very, very bad at timings, but he normally gets the job done. That's the, that's yeah, the thing. <laughs> no, no, no. It was picked up on my radar. radar. I mean, the one that I kind of think that I'd be interested to get feedback on is uh, Claude because that is now released and that can set, summarize up to 75,000 uh, words. Yeah, I can't, I, unfortunately, it's only released for the UK and US, I think. I tried to access it from here in the UAE and it's not available to us at the moment, but it will be eventually. Yeah. You, need, you need to come back, mate. I'm on it already. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I need Maybe I need to... I haven't tried it with a VPN. I'll try and, try and uh, fake as if I'm in the UK and try it. <laughs> No, 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 it's pretty good. I mean, they're trying to basically um, outdo uh, ChatGPT. Sure. 75,000 in, in one summary. Um, amazing. And it can understand more complex questions, which is pretty good. And, um, you know, I, 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 <laughs> can you imagine? So you can actually now upload a hell of a lot more. And yeah. It will ask um, a lot more complex questions. So, yeah, you know, when you get a chance, jump on it. It's brilliant, man. I've been comparing the two. So, did you get early access, Chris? Uh, because uh, did you register earlier on for Slack community or something? Or no, no, not at all. I mean, you know, anything that anything AI comes across my radar, I'm on it. <laughs> so, so I just basically uh, went on to uh, I think it was Product Hunt. So if you go to Product Hunt, um, that's typically where a lot of the AI uh, tools come first. Uh, and then I just signed up for it and got access and um, uh, been using it pretty much every day like uh, ChatGPT. So, yeah. Uh, so how many of you here are using you Bing? Know, because Bing also is very powerful. Bing, Chat, sure. Bing, AI. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But before we move on, Chris, can you please share the, the link to that application? Yeah, yeah. I think Chris is on mute. Chris, you're on mute if you are. Sorry, here we go. I, I'm just uh, going to get it for you. There we go. Uh, so it's Claude.ai. Uh, it's Claude um, I think uh, <clears throat> Claude AI is only available in US and UK. Yeah, that's right. So that's what you have to either go to the US or the UK. <laughs> yeah, or may maybe I will try it with a VPN later and I'll let you know. <laughs> I think it will work. I think if you go yeah. via VPN, it will work. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, you, you, it's it's definitely there. Uh, it's got a more kind of I don't know about the interface. It doesn't really uh, excite me that much. But then again, it's the first kind of iteration of it. Um, yeah, it's, it's still early days, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, but I mean, it, it functions right. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's not as fast to me. It's kind of like in between three point five and four. But the mere fact that you can, you know, you can load a whole PDF, which is like 75,000 words and, um, you know. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's and, and, the, and the more complex reasoning and, and the fact that, you know, the language support in different languages and, you know, it's, it's definitely going to take on, <laughs> I mean, that was their mission, right, is to take on ChatGPT, so, Yeah. It, it's, I'm going to run through a lot of the examples, Martin, that you just went through on, uh, on Claude, uh, just to kind of give a sense in terms of comparison, to see what the speed's like, and maybe um, see if they've got some parameters that you can set, similar to ChatGPT's um, um, playground. But yeah, it's fascinating stuff, and it's mind-blowing everything that's happening every day. I can't, I, I'm struggling to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> of your up mate it's about mm -hmm. being more focused on the couple of use cases that can be applicable to your future of your course keeping track with everything at least with a full time job I don't think it's feasible yeah I mean what I've done is I've automated the whole thing so I have a Microsoft um, I set up like a Microsoft OneNote database and literally as I come across anything I can press on the um the extension that then sends it directly to my my artificial intelligence notebook 
and then it tags it automatically. So that way I don't actually have to spend time. I can just literally point and click. So whether it's YouTube, Twitter, whatever, just pressing one button sends it to a notebook and then that automatically gets tagged. So then I don't have to, that's the only way I can keep up. And that's, that's just using the automation. And then I have my own individual project use cases that I'm using on the side as well. So yeah, I mean, it's, if you, which is that? Which is that AI not notebook? Would you share that with us, please? Um, yeah, I mean, I've got what I can. Uh, let me structure it a little bit because at the moment it's just for me. I'm just throwing everything in it. it um, maybe that's one thing I'll, as part of my presentation. I meant, I meant the application that you're oh, using. Oh no, no, the app application is called OneNote. So it's just a Microsoft product. It's free. Okay. Uh, the same like Evernote. I don't know if you know Evernote. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I thought you were mentioning that then you were using AI to auto categorize that. This was the application that I was talking about. OneNote. Oh, no, 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 no. So OneNote, uh, you're familiar with the application. What I do is I write code to automatically tag it. And then, the, yeah, so when I write the code, it tags it automatically and it uses OneNote's um, capability to, to be able to then use the tagging to find. So then if I do a find, I can get a breakdown of all the summaries of everything automatically. So yeah, it's a, it's a matter of capturing and then uh, code which pre-tags it. And then the, the, the pre-tagging allows me to then use the front end of Microsoft to be able to then create summaries and find stuff. Because everything is just happening too quick, right? So you have to have some means of, of kind of automating uh, the capture, automating the categorization of it, and then using the engine of the um, Microsoft product to do the tool search and creating summaries on the back of the tags that you create. So yeah, I mean, just at me, I I'm hogging the conversation again. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, that's uh, and the uh, second way to come to know about the latest technology is to join the meetups. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I'm on this call, right? I mean, I didn't even, you know, I didn't, I've missed nine of them, haven't I? This is, this is your 10th one. So yeah. I wish so I was here at the beginning. Every, every week we discuss about a, a new yeah. tool. Uh, we, 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 we're just beginning, so uh, this is just uh, yeah, the tasters. <laughs> no, it's really good. I, I, I'm, I'm glad I found you guys. Yeah. So actually, our WhatsApp community, uh, they keep on discussing about a lot of latest things. Uh, uh, and uh, and I was talking earlier on that we are trying to do some summarization of that and uh, of that in bullet points of what people are talking about. And that is really going to help and uh, get uh, about what is the latest things that are happening. Because every space, there are things that are happening that we should uh, at least be aware of. And it is happening so quickly. So Mohammed, what we could do then, which would be fantastic, is as a global, as a community, is set up maybe one notebook, which uh, collectively we could all add to, right? So it's dynamic. It would be completely free. Uh, it would give you the ability to be able to search and get updates globally on anything that's out there. Um, that would just be amazing, right? I mean, you know, having having multiple authors from all over the world with different sites, uh, you know, different views and everything else would be amazing. Because I think that's what's happening at the moment. Everybody's collecting their own repositories uh, and you can't stay on top of everything. So if you, for example, if you come across something like that tool, the aggregate that Martin that you just mentioned, which gives you a breakdown of all the tools by different industries, that's extremely valuable. But if there's five other tools out there which is similar to that, then that makes the notebook sharing even more powerful because then you've got five different places to go to, for example, but you're going to one source. You're going to one notebook which has got everything in, but you've identified five different products or tools that might be um, of value. And that way you just you accelerate the, the, the kind of uh, knowledge sharing uh, very, very quickly. So, I mean, it's just something you might want to, we might want to take forward and discuss. But in the past, when I've mentioned these things, you know, nobody kind of takes me up on it and it's just me soldiering <laughs> with it. No, that is, uh, no, the thing is, that is correct. Uh, what you're saying to create a repository. One more thing, as also Martin was telling, right? You don't need to get lost. 
uh, see we what we do is we should know the tools what is happening how what is the capability of the tools but stick to things that are actually helping us solve a business problem uh, particular to you that is very important so because as we all know thousands of apps are uh, coming daily and day out right it is like uh, mobile covers right the phone is apple iphone 14 but there are and these are like just mobile covers right? and they are just doing a simple application over the gpts and the llms that are there so which is not that helpful so we should only focus uh, we should know about these the new tools that are there but we should only use the ones that have a good backing right like the one the gpt the chat gpt that uh, martin has showed last week i was talking about bing chat bing ai these are the tools that have proven themselves and they are uh, they have uh, capabilities like bard for google so these are the tools that are and they have the potential to uh, do something but these apps there are a lot of a lot of apps we all know right they keep releasing on uh, it's uh, there are a lot of marketing that is going on they are just uh, you can say a, like a a layer over gpt which may not be that helpful you don't need to pay for exactly that uh, for specific use cases but you can uh, know about these things and know how it works and focus on the tools that are really helpful uh, and uh, that is my take because many people get confused right uh, there are so many ads about building website using ai building presentations with ai so they just what they do they take your prompt they finally they go to gpt they generate something and then they give you an output uh, do you really need to pay monthly for that tool uh, so you should ask that question before uh, jumping to such tools and do your own research that is what is my suggestion to the community out here today and the problem is with a lot of those tools is um, some of them have got limitations or some of them provide you with incorrect information right so if you use bard they kind of say okay it gives you real time information but then you know a lot of the information is is flawed if you you know the links that they provide that it comes back with uh, potentially non existent or it just makes up information so you know i tend to stay clear of it for anything that i want the accuracy to be 100% if you like or as close as you can um so yeah identifying those type of products for those particular use cases is is um definitely something that you need to be mindful of uh but yeah i mean it's uh, it's 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 amazing i mean it's it's, it's incredible <laughs> it's a journey i don't know about you patrick but you know i thought about you know the internet was one thing but this is just this is how nice. <laughs> like on steroids <laughs> well we we were chatting with martin at the beginning and just before we started officially and that how the generational shifts are getting faster and faster and faster you know the internet came on stream and then you had social media and now we're always gener generating uh, ai generative ai and and the gap between each generation is getting shorter and shorter and the next new thing is coming quicker and quicker so the biggest challenge is to try and get, <laughs> filter it all out and get the useful bits of course yeah. Yeah. Exactly. so uh, mahame we're coming to the end of that session we need to t you need to talk about the competition winners etc sure, sure. um and next week's plans as well just to remind you yeah i'll do that but i'm just saying zach today is not speaking at all what happened you are not available you, <laughs> because zach is one of the most active members yeah. of our community till date i don't know today what happened are you busy uh, no, i'm still Sorry. here but i didn't want to disturb mark can you hear me yeah go ahead zach how are you yeah we can hear you I'm doing great. So I just didn't want to disturb Martin because he was really doing a good presentation. A lot of people were enjoying, and uh, like I just wanted to give the space maybe this time. But next time, guys, I'll be talking a lot. I'm actually I might prepare for a presentation. <laughs> I want to show off some uh, some of the things that I've built so far, and I could also uh, share some of the tools that I use daily, especially for AI. So maybe soon. Brilliant. That's what we'd love to do. Uh, uh, click on the connection. That Mohammed put out earlier and, and add your name and the, and the date you want to do it. So yeah, uh, I yep, think yep, uh, I will. I will. I will do that. So uh, there is a form form for this thing uh, for uh, the for speakers. Right, just fill it up. Maybe it can be a session in August also. Just think about a topic and fill it up so that I can prioritize and I can put you on. So uh, Chris, yeah, I think right, I will I think. share you personally the WhatsApp link uh, maybe after the call or. Uh, 
or you is it it's on nas.io i just let me share it you just put your you were on the group before then what happened yeah. you by mistake you went off or something i don't know i mean it it, it definitely I, you okay. know i what happened but i was when you initially started some time ago i know i was on it like i say anything ai i normally jump on right <laughs> so i don't know what happened i kind of uh, it it kind of went missing so yeah if i can get back in that'd be great yes i put the group or i put the uh, uh, whatsapp chat this thing our group invitation link on the chat you can just join in so so pratik shall i start over the this thing the update yeah yeah i think uh If we're going to stick to the 90 minutes you're going to have to. <laughs> sure. So okay, thank you everyone and uh, I have shared the link so uh thank you Martin it was a one wonderful session and uh, I'll just give a quick update uh and also about the plans right about our what we are planning to do in coming months. So thanks Patrick for first of all making setting up the agendas and making things in process. Uh till now it, it is today our 10th meeting and we will continue weekly to do this. we have invited lot of speakers uh, guests from different industries to come and share their perspective and i also encourage everyone from the community also to uh, just think about a presentation that what you are doing uh, the cat can help all of us because all of us are learning from each other and that is what uh, uh, the main purpose of bringing this community in place was so we have with some weekly events that are planned and we wanted to put a schedule it in our uh, events also in the nas community that where this whole community is sitting nas.io/artificialintelligence so we have linkedin audio events so i one linkedin audio event is specific to the business right this community right now all of us here are business people who are using ai for business and people who are learners of ai and it is bringing them together and these knowledge sharing sessions because both go and in uh, together business and technology it has to go together to solve problems that's why this is the good thing about this community it is not only for people who want to learn but also businesses who are here to share and uh, uh, do this so two webinars specifically uh, audio events this happen on thursday 7 pm and all these times are in dubai time dubai time so i i will uh, put it on the event page all the time zones that but you can uh, access it saturday 1:30 pm is for the carriers because how to get into ai if you want to take ai and data science as a career what are the steps you should take because you cannot just at day 1 start building chatbots start build, building chat gpt so these events are good for people who really want to take care of rock or to a startup i think uh, one second uh, sorry i put her on mute okay cool and saturday uh, after lot of trials and errors Uh, we set up this time for 4 pm this is the current time that we are having do, do, this is dubai time uh, so you can convert so i think 8 o'clock american time 8 am morning so it's a good time for people from us to also join in people from singapore australia to also join in and this asia region so it's a good time i think we should stick with this till further changes that are happening so as promised uh, we are planning to do workshops uh, we have a deciding and see how to do bo workshops we will not start with tech, two, two technical workshops but we are going to start with business oriented workshops in the initially uh, like to get people to start using these tools quickly right we want outcome based uh, we call this as outcome based workshop so the first workshop that we are going to do is specifically towards more of our, about a combination as uh, martin also told we can't only use one tool but a combination of tools and this is more specific towards uh bing dali and uh, mid journey or any other tools that you want to use and uh, this is going to happen on 19 july we have already put all the details in the whatsapp community yesterday and if you want to join you can join this link this the second workshop for this month will be something more related to chat gpt pro plugins it can be anything it can be a little bit of code interpreter all the things that um, even martin showed but more detailed like a workshop like how to actually start using it and how to build a simple think project or simple work that you are doing and it is going to be both are going to be outcome based like most of us here are doing some sort of marketing it can be marketing for themselves or marketing for their companies so these are the workshops that are getting planned next month we are going to plan little bit uh, uh, technical uh, as well but these also are very important for businesses other than these workshops we are also going to start live programs wherein people who want to learn python specifically because many people ask how they can use python for data science that we are finalizing with the numbers and the timings and we will uh, announce that very soon 
and about uh, yeah this uh, as speaker list i already shared with you for this week uh, python we so what we do as a competition to also inspire learners we do python challenges so we have been doing basic python challenges for a long time uh, this week we are going to introduce one uh, hacker rank challenge where people need to challenge uh, try to solve this and show sh- showcase their uh, uh, you can say how they have gone through this challenge in explain the code because running the code is fine but how you explain it really matters so this this is a weekly challenge that i do i've been doing the weekly challenge since i started the community 10 weeks back where uh, we have a challenge and we have a prize right we have a prize uh, for the person who has uh, uh, answered all mo- mostly all the correct questions and with proper explanation so these are the things that are there for uh july and uh, we were inviting more and more speakers and live programs and workshops as promised two workshops we are going to do uh, focused more on the business side and how to use these tools uh more efficiently and now uh two talks that i'm giving uh, this uh, month right one this is for physical meetup specifically uh, if people are interested i've shared this on the group one is uh, in uh, coders hq basically i am also part of the ministry of ue ai office wherein i uh, as a counter ambassador wherein i give so this is one of the initiatives about talking about the importance of python right uh, uh, how to uh, use python to start doing the coding start doing the uh, building th- projects building things so this is one of the things to motivate and the mostly the crowd here are people who are from in high school or in the first year of college who are not, who have not yet started their programming journey because programming if they start early it is uh, good so this is the initiative by the government of uae dubai where i am based out of and i am doing this event i just wanted to show the community whoever are physically present in dubai and the link you can share and you can join these events are free and for the awareness and the second event that i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to talk about uh, large language models specifically uh, this there is a large language model that falcon uh, the tii the ua government has built uh, a custom trained large language model called falcon on amazon sage maker so i'm i have been doing a lot of research on that topic and uh, i'm going to talk in aws i'm also an aws ambassador so this is also going to be a physical meeting uh, and i have tried i will try to record this and also share it with the community but whoever are in dubai you must to join this this is on both this is on 18th of july and this is on 19th of july so back to back the uh, next week we have these two meetings that i am physically doing as a speaker and i just wanted the community to know about this and uh, the links are here and i will also share this uh, links and i have already done it in the groups if you anyone wants to get it i can share it with them but these are mostly physical and both are in dubai and now coming to the winner for this last week's challenge uh, if aksha is there i think on the call so uh, th- thank congratulations aksha i will be sh- taking your email and i will also be sending you the uh, other team will be sending you the formalities to get your course access worth 49 dollars from the academy and thank you for and you know the good thing about her she was solving the python challenge in notebook the whole solution and explaining it in a notebook and taking the picture and putting it which was amazing and uh, congratulations aksha for this and i encourage every are you there on the call aksha i think you are there right congratulations yes yes for thank this thank you thank you sir yeah i will be sending you uh, on maybe on the community or linkedin you i'll get your email id i'll send you the certificate and i will send you the the team will send you the how to access the uh, page so continue the challenge and uh, there are a lot of people here who have been doing challenges regularly azam is one here ashraf is here who are have been also one previously continue the challenges the challenges are the best way for you to practice coding uh, to uh, because we all know that this is the uh, base of everything you you can get outputs from gpt and all those things but you should know whether it is correct or not correct and these things really help you and i encourage everyone since day 1 because python is the still now till now something may come later on like julia or rush but till now python is there and is going to be there for some time so focus and become good in this and your logics will really really improve so congratulations aksha so i this 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 week's challenge is going to start from today and i will also encourage people uh, because we have been doing basic programming uh, basic python for a long time today we are going to start with intermediate hacker rank the link is here i will post it also in the community page so now coming to 
the last part like uh, m- many people don't know that we have a nas platform so if i can quickly share so we have basic courses in the nas platform so you all are there active on whatsapp i'm sure you know that you have joined the whatsapp group but i just today i want to quickly show you how to access the our platform on the internet or on your mobile right so it is basically a nas.io/artificial intelligence is the our the community that we are part of and for the premium community it is nas.io ai guild both the communities you can access all the events all the contents that are there by going on internet it is nas.io people just use it to get into whatsapp and communicate that is very good but this community is much much more than whatsapp it is it has every it has all the events that are going to happen the live events the past events then we have the content part which is the most important thing when when because this is the part wherein you will get all the access to the basic courses that are there we all know how important excel is sql is so you will when you log in you will you can go here when you click here you will be able to see all the uh, videos that are there structured one out of 9 one out of 10 uh, and for all the courses so this this is a platform which is very very important for you to go in and this has to be gone when through website or you can also install the nas io app and uh, use it in your mobile app or application also so these are the courses uh, the self paced courses that you can see and also the materials the i have lot of generative whatever like uh, some uh, chris was mentioning like what are the good materials that i have i put it out here i structure it and after reviewing it and reading it then only i put it here the meetup recordings that uh, we are doing right now because we have lot of meetups everything uh, will be in this so if anyone misses it out uh, they can come here and they can see the meetup recordings uh, we have some templates resume templates some linkedin P- checklist uh, sql documents and a lot of things that are there and all my webinars that i do also on the data science career space because there are two uh, type of webinars i do one is for career focused one is for uh, business everything is here so i would encourage people um, uh, to go to this websites to access the content the events and this is one way that you can uh, really take use of this and one more thing that we all know last week uh, we have been doing this community for 10 months and now we have because uh, there are some people who are actually learners and who are serious about workshops specifically right so this uh, this is one this is a premium community that i and patrick with elbow patrick have launched and uh, the link is here uh, nas.io/aiguild we are the we are doing workshops we are doing uh, you saw the course accesses all the basic course accesses all the recordings everything at one place that i am put trying to put it uh, and also this is a, one of the things that i can personally also talk to the people who are here and help them in their journey as well so this is the link to join and if anyone is interested uh, you can um, take this link and also I, maybe next time i'll put a qr code for people to scan and uh, i think uh, now patrick uh, now i think i will give it for you to wrap up I, exactly 5 minutes is left so thank you everyone and uh, i'll stop my sharing yes patrick <laughs> well really just say yeah, to thank everybody for coming along thank you martin for a fantastic presentation and everybody else for contributing it's been brilliant really and again every week it gets better and better and that's all because of you guys helping to contribute and we really are very uh, very grateful for your time that you spend with the group if anybody has any other further points now's the time to mention <laughs> no okay all right so i guess uh, that's it we look forward to seeing you at the same time next week 4 p.m. uh golf time uh golf standard time next saturday and uh i don't do you, who mohammed who's speaking next week do we know so next week there are two people i have to confirm uh okay. i have to get a final confirmation because you know if people get busy so i take sure. the final confirmation on monday so okay. uh, so we'll post I, up on the groups when uh, yes, when we yeah. have a final confirmation yeah so i have, we have two people but who is going to present for sure i will uh, confirm on monday and then i will yeah it's a lot of admin work you all be to make sure that the people are going to come and uh, and so <laughs> on it uh, yeah exactly yeah but the more the merrier come on everybody join in it'll make, it makes it more fun so <laughs> yeah anyway thank you very much for your time everybody and um have a good week see you next week cheers yeah, thank bye you bye. everyone bye bye
thank you patrick thank you martin thank you everyone bye sir thank you ashraf so party uh, today patrick it was on time huh? i stopped the recording